Okay, good evening, good morning. Um, my name is John Traxler. I'm John Traxler. I'm a professor of mobile learning at the University of Wolverhampton. I've been involved in mobile learning almost since the beginning of the century, so that's 12 or 13 years, pretty much. Um, it's been some large-scale European projects. It's been some smaller projects uh, in East Africa, South Africa, the Middle East, and it's been some international work with agencies such as uh, UNESCO. I think globally, more or less in any country that I've had any experience of looking at the developed world and the developing world, the biggest and most pressing problems I think are to do with the credibility, the authority and the relevance of educational institutions. And if I could explain that, I think schools, colleges, universities in many parts of the world are very static, inflexible institutions which was okay when they lived in a static and inflexible world, but I think because of mobile technologies, networks, coverage, access and ownership, our world's now characterised by movement, fluidity, transience, mobility. Uh, and I think our educational institutions and the people that work in them and the technologies they often use have trouble keeping up. Uh, our societies are very, very mobile our educational institutions are not and it's quite possible they will lose the kind of authority and the credibility they've got um, and they'll become increasingly relevant unless they recognize this is a kind of tipping point um, it's not the world it used to be goodness okay um, I mean, I guess the key words are things like openness, agility, permeability, responsiveness. And I suppose I'm, I'm saying the institutions ought to be, but how we work in them and what we work with ought to be more agile and open and responsive as well. So I suppose if you chose a particular aspect of um, course design and materials design, I think historically, certainly in the UK um, and maybe in Africa, what we've seen is curricula courses, materials, uh, which have been very static and unresponsive and we've tried to achieve quite high standards in terms of quality and presentation um, at the expense of being responsive. So I think in terms of what you're asking, what we need is materials that are a lot more good enough and not perfect, where we recognize they're going to be good enough for now, but we'll need to throw them away where we get used to a mindset that we'll use whatever is nearby, whatever looks relevant, and that's not going to be permanent, it's not going to be perfect, we'll move on. So that also implies methods of working that are listening, listening to the responses of students, of society, so that there is a reason why things get thrown away, and that's because next time round, next year round, they're replaced with something more appropriate, more responsive. And I think also we need to um, get rid of well, what some people call a kind of silo menta mentality that we need to develop our own materials for our own courses. We don't. Um, everyone's developing all sorts of courses, all sorts of materials. We need to find ways of incorporating them into frameworks um, of knowing that they're good enough for what our students need, they're up to date enough for what our students need. Tomorrow, next year, they won't be, and we'll do it again. I guess most of the time I'm um, speaking in public and trying to make these kinds of arguments to different kinds of audiences. So it might be uh, regulatory organizations, it might be the university management, uh, it might be agencies like UNESCO or USAID, and saying that they need to take this on board. That, for example, professional attitudes and prof professional skills need to change, that our educators need to learn from their students. Um, that we need more uh, MOOCs, you know, massive online open courses, more open courses, more collaborations such as ours with Stanford and Beersight, where we're looking at uh, a new generation of educators and teacher trainers. And another major aspect in terms of 
design and sustainable responsive education is what you in the US are calling BYOD, bring your own device. So that's a design challenge. How do you design uh, responsive, flexible, open and up-to-date materials for hardware systems that you can't predict, that are diverse, transient and, and changeable? Unless you can do that, uh, you won't be able to deploy materials on devices that are owned and used by all of our students and you won't have a sustainable solution for educational materials. So I think that so I also advocate that very strongly that we look at developing materials that students will like, will want to use, that will sit happily in their own devices, that they can use socially, personally, in all sorts of different and diverse environments. So I think that is a big, big, big design challenge. Um, all the more so as people are using mobile technologies in every aspect of their everyday life. They have a particular set of expectations about how they'll use mobile devices and those aren't necessarily the expectations they got from their school or their college or their university about what stuff looks like and how stuff should behave. Design skills are incredibly important, I think, in the context of the work you're doing, that we're now in a much more challenging environment um, where the opportunities are vast and so are the challenges. So uh, good luck to anyone that's tackling them. <laughs>